Hey everyone, this is Norm Ferrar, aka The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the Amazon FBA and e-commerce podcast. In this episode, we are going to talk about how to drive millions of impressions to your brand using YouTube and Google Ads. So welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the Amazon FBA and e-commerce podcast. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. All right. Like I mentioned, we're going to be talking about how to drive millions of impressions to your brand using YouTube and Google ads. And I know this is what a lot of listeners were asking for. So we decided to go out there and find one of the top people in the industry to talk about it. So today we're, we're going to be talking about why uh, should sellers use Google and YouTube ads? What do you need in order to start? And what mistakes are people making? So welcome to another Lunch with Norm Amazon FBA podcast and our ghost, uh, our ghost, our guest, almost a ghost. Our guest is an entrepreneur, investor, uh, uh, entrepreneur and breakfast burrito aficionado. He is a big believer in living a life you love and runs a successful business while traveling the world with his wife. He's been featured in Forbes magazine in 2017 for helping clients book over 1 million appointments into their sales pipeline. He is also the co-founder of Mojo Global and is considered a top 1% influencer by LinkedIn. And today, first time guest, Corey Sanchez will be joining us. But before we get to Corey, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. A big thank you to our sponsor, Post Purchase Pro the only complete A to Z done for you real email and text marketing service built specifically for Amazon sellers. My friends, Sean Hart and Seth Stevens co-founded Post Purchase Pro after launching over a thousand successful private labeled products, growing 53 brands and get this exiting 17 businesses. Post Purchase Pro creates all of your digital assets 100% for you from marketing inserts, complete sales funnels, email follow-up sequences, and weekly email promotions. They manage and optimize everything for you to drive more sales, get higher ranking, and receive more reviews on Amazon. So check out Post Purchase Pro now to see if you too will see enormous growth like their nearly 500 clients worldwide. That's Post Purchase Pro at postpurchasepro.com slash lunch. All right, we're back. And probably the most important thing, Kelsey's back. Hello, everyone. It's me. Did you miss me? I I, I, I uh, missed you. I missed you. Oh, thank you. I hope Hayden, uh, you know, behaved himself while uh, he was here. I heard uh, he didn't do anything too, too crazy. He didn't do anything crazy. I, I was waiting for these. Wow. 30 second spots of producer for the people and you know, stuff like that. But uh, he actually behaved himself. Wow. Wow. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyways, welcome to the show. I'm back from Halifax. It's good to see everyone. I hope you're doing well. Let us know where you're watching from in the comment sections. It's great to see our beard nations from around the world. So uh, let us know. Uh, also, don't forget to smash those like buttons. Give us a thumbs up if you're enjoying today's episode. And if you have comments, questions, if you want to let us know topics that you want us to talk about, let us know in the comment sections. That's why it's there. Um, we want to make this a discussion. And uh, yeah, this is a live Q&A um, podcast. So if you have questions for Corey, for Norm about today's topic, just let us know in the comment sections. Um, also, don't forget to join our Facebook group. That's Lunch with Norm, Amazon FBA and e-commerce collective. That's where all the good stuff happens. That's where our deals happen. That's where you can meet our guests. You can network, you can get giveaway or enter our giveaways. That's where it happens. So make sure you join that Lunch with Norm uh, Facebook group down below. Also wanna shout out Manny all the way from Germany. It's good to see you, Fatten, and also Tony. Good to be back as well, Tony. Good to see you. Uh, Great to see Yanni as well. And uh, yeah, today's gonna be a great episode. We got a great giveaway as well. and i think that's about it okay 
So I think if anybody has any questions or comments, just throw them over in the comment section and we will get back to you as soon as possible. And look at, you know, you're getting all these little welcome rich. back notes. Yeah, there you go. So sweet. <laughs> okay. So sit back, relax, grab that cup of coffee, enjoy this episode and welcome Corey. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? <laughs> wow what a difference in the background my gosh <laughs> <laughs> you know i'm so i'm in scotland today uh so i travel the world with my wife we go to a new country every month and this month we went to we came to scotland because there's a something called fringe fest yeah 30 day comedy festival and it's really very fun so if you're an aspiring uh comedian or playwright which I'm not. A lot of people usually ask me after I say that. Um, I just like the, I like to laugh. <laughs> uh, and there's funny, there's really funny shows, like a lot of up and comers. Um, and also some very famous folks that just like to kind of dabble with stuff. It's kind of a like to, you know, a comedian, famous comedians going to smaller venues to just try out their jokes. And um, it's 30 days of shows. So what, what? what performers do is they usually have a show every day. For 30 days it's pretty it's a pretty obscene schedule but it's more work than they'll probably sometimes get in an entire year but it really allows them to kind of test market their material and just have a lot of fun with it some people even have multiple shows like one in the afternoon and one in the evening so um so if you're looking for a fun festival that is great for the whole family uh i really recommend fringe festival so uh anyway there's my little Promo uh, for right. nothing that I'm part of, but you know, I just I've never heard cool. of it before. I know, like, like, um, I'm originally from Montreal, and Montreal has just for laughs, and I don't even know if that festival is still going on, but that that used to be a hoot, um, but not for 30 days. That That's crazy, yeah, yeah, it's a really good time. So, my my wife uh, has been wanting to, to visit it for a long time, so we just thought, ah, let's go for it. We were in just we were in Budapest up until about a, a week and a half ago, and then. Just hopped on over. So, yeah, we're enjoying it. This is about the nicest weather that you will get in uh, Scotland, I think, right about now. It's actually quite warm, which is very nice. Beautiful. So I know the listeners are all starting to, to pile in now. Um, if you do have questions or comments, throw them in the comments section. Look, we're going to be talking about something that everybody's been asking for, and that's about external traffic and what you can do about it. You know, we're going to be talking about how you can get impressions from Google and YouTube. So uh, anyways, Corey is the person to ask these questions uh, to. If you have a simple question or if you don't think that it is relevant or if you think, oh, this is too newbie-ish, don't worry. There's a ton of people listening that think that they have newbie questions. And if you don't ask, they'll never get answered. So anyways, let's do this. And by the way, Corey, um, I heard about your company, Mojo Global. Um, the first time I heard about it was uh, through Wilford, Wilford Lightheart. And he's been on here for, uh, well, he's been on this probably two or three times, probably listening now. But anyways... Um, if you have not checked out um, uh, Corey's company, check it out. It is awesome. Uh, and they have a, a bunch of things going on over there. I know I, I've, I've checked it out. Uh, I don't know if you want to add anything there, Corey. Uh, I know we'll be talking about a giveaway a bit later on in the episode. Yeah, well, yeah, Wilfried. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, and I've heard about you for a long time, too. So I'm glad we're, fi we're finally connecting, <laughs> uh, which is great. Yeah, but my company, you know, we've been around 13 years and, you know, started off in video, uh, video production. Um, and then we started creating video software in SaaS. And this was this was back when not very many people did video. This was like early, early days. So we we created software that people could take a video on their cell phone, upload it into our and we would mobile encode it. And then you could email it out to people and text message it out. And this was back in the days when. BlackBerry was the only phone with data. So that was like very, it was very pioneering ahead of its time. Nowadays, we focus mostly on LinkedIn and LinkedIn marketing uh, and also um, driving traffic, which, you know, some people wonder is like, okay, driving millions of impressions. Um, you know, what, how have you done that? What have you done? I actually ran the ads for traffic and conversion last year. Um, and, uh, and which is the largest marketing event uh, in, right. in North America, potentially the world. Um, 
And so I was the guy that uh, did, did their YouTube ads, Google ads, and I didn't have a long time to do it. I had only about five weeks to drive traffic and sent them about 1,200 buyers for their ticket. And their tickets range anywhere from $200 all the way up to like $2,000. Uh, so it was a really cool, it was a really cool thing because a lot of people during COVID, they, they learned new skills or uh, or not. I don't know. Some people learned how to bake bread. Um, I learned how to do YouTube ads and Google ads. And that was what I did. And it was really fun. And I kind of got to the point where I got really good at it. And that's why they sought me out to do that. So uh, so that's on the table. So yeah, we've got a lot to discuss, Norm. Oh, that's really cool. So if they are asking you uh, to do that, uh, you, you must have some talent. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. I don't yeah, know. I guess. <laughs> All right. So let's let's talk about it. Like, there, there's so many, there's a lot of Amazon sellers that listen to the podcast, um, Shopify sellers, but mostly Amazon sellers that are, uh, it's about a third, a third, a third from beginner all the way up to expert. So let's start with like talking about Google and YouTube ads. So why should people start using uh, Google and YouTube ads? Well, I mean, if you think, if you look at it, like the AI that Google has is pretty tremendous. I mean, they just have so many years of, of just figuring out who's a buyer. And that's what they have. They have a list of buyers. They have the biggest list of buyers, probably undeniably than any other mm -hmm. uh, company on the world. They know who buys stuff. Uh, and because their goal is to really help you find people that are going to buy your stuff. That's what they want to do. That's how they get paid. That's how they make the most amount of money. So uh, I really find it's an easy way to get traffic. It's an easy way to kind of test a lot of things. It's, and, it, and primarily, it's a really great way to get a lot of buyers. And I think at the end of the day, that's really what it comes down to. Why would you do anything in marketing? Because nobody just wants to spend money just willy-nilly, right? Uh, you want to get sales. And that's really why people, why I find Google and YouTube ads to be great. I mean, there's a lot of ways to get traffic. Let's be real. You know, yeah. I think that's, um, you know, but at the end of the day, you got to do what's best for your company, for your business. And I really think you got to be looking at kind of, you know, where can I pull traffic from? And it just happens that Google and YouTube happens to be one of the biggest feeds out there. It's not the only way, right? I mean, there's plenty of traffic you can get from Instagram and Facebook and, you know, perhaps Twitter, depending on things or Quora and, and all of these these other platforms, but I mean, who's the biggest dog out there? And I'm not I'm not a proponent. It's like I I really do this for myself. So like my business is really LinkedIn marketing. I teach people how to get leads on LinkedIn. I teach people uh, how to get B two B traffic, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and appointment setting. That's what my company does. So I'm not here to like sell anything when it comes to that. I just like to do cool stuff and then kind of talk about it and, and, and educate people about it. So most of the people uh, talk about Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, and a lot about TikTok. That's what, those are the three, what I, I hear mostly when I talk to people about uh, Google, a lot of the times, Oh, it's too expensive. Oh, it's too complicated. What are your thoughts on this? And is there a price point? Like, is there a specific sweet spot that your product should be um, selling for? No, I mean, I don't think so. I mean, if you if you take a look at the ads that you get, which, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people, everybody's on YouTube, right? I don't know anybody that doesn't look at videos on YouTube. Now, you might, some people have the paid subscription where you don't see ads. That's up to, you know, that's that's up to you. Um, I know a lot of people that really don't. Um, and for me, as a marketer, I'm kind of interested in ads, so I, I don't mind seeing ads. That's just kind of how it goes. Um, but I don't think... If you look at the ads that you get, it's all across the board. I mean, you've got products there that are just, you know, uh, under a hundred bucks all the way up to in the, in the, even the tens of thousands of dollars. So as far as price points go, I mean, I've heard the same about Facebook, you know, it's being right. too expensive um, and other platforms. So yeah, I mean, there's, there's, a, hey, there's a way to spend a lot of money on almost any platform. So it goes to your next question, which is, it's too complicated, right? Is it too complicated? And the answer, the answer is yes and no, right? Um, because it's, it's very simple if you don't mind paying a little bit more because you're going to be using more of their AI to help you get customers, right? So, so it's very expensive if you don't know what you're doing. Um, 
And if you do know a bit about what you're doing, then it becomes a whole lot less expensive, right? So that's just how it is. So, so I always look at it as like, how can I increase my intelligence about something so that way I can know it better so that way it'll cost me less in the, in the long run, right? So there's kind of like a return on education. Um, and uh, I think I find that to be in, so valuable. So the more you know about it, yes, the better you're going to get. So I, I look at it like this. I think it's really like if you can learn how to run Google ads, you can really learn how to feed your business forever. Because, and I do think that perhaps, it probably because, you know, if you've ever run Twitter ads, those are pretty relatively straightforward to run, right? Um, Google seems to be one of the more complex ones, but they're going in the direction of making it easier for you. So that way they're doing a lot of the hard work. And right. And that's really the direction they're going into. They, they want to make it so that way any business in America can run ads on their platform. And it's kind of like, just let them handle it, right? Because they really want to be in business somehow with all these businesses across America. I mean, they, that's what they want, right? Like, they even want to know how much money you're making in some ways. So that way, they, they, they almost like want to be your business partner uh, in some things. Now, whether that's good or bad. It depends because obviously if they're in partnership with you, they want you to make profits and make you, you know, have you make money. They don't want you to lose money. Right. Um, but my thing is, if you know how to run Google, you can get the cheapest traffic, you could get the most traffic and you could get the most buyers. Right. All of that to say that, um, because I think it's one of the most scalable things that you can actually do. Um, and and partly it's because there's so many different ways to advertise, whether it's uh, on search, whether it's on uh, mobile phones, whether it's on desktop phones, whether it's um, whether you're advertising people on YouTube, which I find is one of the best ways that I've advertised my own company. So there's just a lot of options there that um, there's just a lot of inventory that you can tap into. So on YouTube, uh, still very popular to run the pre-rolls? Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Because it, it allows you, it's so different than I think a lot of other things because it allows you to really educate people uh, in a different way. Like one of my best ad funnels is a five and a half minute video um, that advertises an opt-in form for a kind of a, a, a another video, a lead magnet, so to speak. And that does incredibly well, uh, incredibly well. We've made millions and millions of dollars from just a simple funnel like that. Um, and I've tried other things, other videos and all this stuff. And just uh, you get a creative that works really well. This is what I love about it. You get a creative that works super well. You can use this creative for years uh, and it'll feed your business. So it's just really about finding that right formula and going at it. Right. Now, is this something not everybody's creative? Not everybody can write copy. Is it something that you would just give to an agency right away or would you try to experiment with it yourself? Uh, yeah. So there's uh, two ways to that, right? Because, mm -hmm. okay, so let's look at the economics of it, right? Because it could be, it's, it's, it, there's multifacets to this, this question. Let's look at the economics. Let's say you hire an agency to do it. Um, you can go out there and find um, potentially a, a contractor to do it, like on Upwork or something like that, and they could do it. Um, and, and the challenge becomes is that you don't know if they're doing it right. Mm -hmm. Um, but it could certainly be the cheapest. Like you could probably find somebody to do it for up, you know, maybe 500 bucks a month, right? Something like that. Or, and you know, they're probably overseas. Um, but that doesn't mean that they're not really good at it. But the thing is, you never really know about that. And you could, and, and there's agencies that will charge, you know, a portion of ad spend and multiple thousands of dollars all the way up to $5,000 and then ad spend on top of that. So I think it comes down to your own economics, right? So look at it over the long term, over the course of a year. Let's just say that somebody, you're spending a thousand bucks a month to pay somebody to do your advertising. Um, so you add that up over the course of a year, it's $12,000. And you take a look at like, what could you invest into yourself over that same amount of time uh, in order to make that happen, right? So is there courses out there you could get? Over the course of a year, could you get more... Could you be to the point where you're really, really nailing the approach on it, right? So maybe maybe it's a blended approach. Maybe that you have somebody do it for the first couple of months as you're learning, right? It's kind of like, you know, suit me up and, and you, you, you're, you're ready in the wings in the batter's box and learning it. 
And that way you actually can, at some point, you can run it yourself. That might be an ideal situation. Some people out there are like, screw that. I don't want to know anything about it. I just want somebody to do it really well. Um, and in that case, then yeah, I mean, there's plenty of people out there that are very bright and that, that's their living. They know how to do these ads. So it's really up to you and what you want to accomplish. For me, I think if it's, I think if it's one of those things that feeds my business, I really want to know about it. Right. right? And I think I always look at business like going back in the ages um, and who were the best, you know, who were the best business owners, the ones that scaled up, like even the old times, like even a, like a hundred years ago or earlier last or last century, you know, last, uh, You're last talk of my years. time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, and, and I always think, you know, what were they investing their time into? Like what did scale up scaling up look like there? And, and I think, I think if you're looking to scale, I think learning how to bring in customers is probably one of the most important things that you could do beyond obviously good customer service and making a really killer product. So I, I think it's just one of those things that at some point it makes sense for you to be the biggest badass at driving traffic um, in your field. Right. Um, Cause that's, it's going to feed your business for a long time. So that, that's how I look at it. Right. And you know, my goal is to be like surgeon level and in, in driving paid traffic um, because that's, it really is kind of that level, but it's worth it to do that because if you nail it, you can get paid so much more in your own business um, to do it. It's, I think it's awesome. And you know, one of the things you said at the very beginning is, you know, Google has, the largest database of buyers. You know, people think, okay, Amazon, you've got that captivated audience, but as long as you know how to tap into those buyers, it should be okay. It should be easy. You know, and and you'll learn from it, and you'll start to to grow this list. And the beauty of it, what I like, is that they're your customers. Whether you drive them over to a landing page and then over to Amazon, or just directly over to a Shopify page. They're your customers, and then you can take it to the next step, which is put them into a funnel for email, for product launches, for whatever you want. And, uh, you know, that's that's what's really cool. So I do have a question for any of the listeners. Are you guys using external traffic? Are you using Google or, or uh, YouTube for ads to drive traffic? Uh, just let us know. I'd be interested to hear this. And if not, why, why not? One of the other things uh, I'd like to know is to, to get started, how hard is it to, to really, you know, get going with uh, developing Google ads or your, uh, your YouTube ads? So, okay, good. So in the beginning, it doesn't have to be too complex, right? Um, you know, it, so, so number one, kind of, you got to pick a medium, right? For me, I think for e-commerce, video is so important. I mean, somebody can see your testimonials, right? I mean, just look at all the sl slam, the smash hits in the e-commerce world that are out there, uh, you know, and everybody, you know who I'm talking about, right? You know, those commercials, those products that have just like on Game Busters and you, you know, they're making millions, tens of millions of dollars and doing extremely well because of the video they produced, right? Why, why can't everybody, why can't you do that, right? Mm -hmm. There's more than enough traffic out there. There certainly is. So I would say pick your medium. There's a lot you can do. Um, and your, your job is to get your product in front of as many people as possible. Um, you know, back in the day, that used to be maybe going to shows and showing it off to a lot of people, right? It might, it might be buying uh, ad space on television, right? If you really want to scale it up. So these days, that's, that is YouTube. That, that's exactly where you can get that amount of volume. So I think it makes sense for a lot of people to really focus on product ads. Um, I think that's really one of the best things because what better way to showcase what your product does and, you know, and, and, and how it works and the testimonials that people have and the experience and telling the story of your company. Right? I can't tell you how many products I've purchased where I, I didn't know anything about it. And then all of a sudden I'm pulling out my credit card to buy it just from a simple YouTube ad. So I think that goes a long way. So I don't think it takes a lot of knowledge to, um, kind of, you know, get a, get a good video. I know you've had people on here before that talk a lot about video and marketing and stuff like that. You've, there's tremendous amounts of resources out there. There's tremendous amounts of videos that you can watch. Some people put it together themselves. Doesn't have to be too, too you know, um, too crazy as far as cost. And then you just upload it and then you start putting some ad copy together. 
um, and then running campaigns. So I don't think it takes too much to get things going. But, you know, once you get to that point, yeah, you probably want to dial it in. But I'd say you need a video, you need some ad copy, and you need a relative knowledge about who you're going after. Competitive research, keywords people might type in, things they're looking up on YouTube. Those are all pretty basic things that you can find that within an hour, you know, of doing, key, of doing research, you can have pretty much everything that you need to, to run your first campaign. Okay, so let's see. It is well, it's right at the bottom of the hour. So uh, look, again, listeners, if you do have any questions, throw them in the comments section. We are having uh, Wheel of Kelsey today. Uh, uh, let's see. No Wheel of Hayden today, guys. It's Wheel of Kelsey. So this is going to be Corey's first. Uh, anyways, Corey, why don't you tell everybody uh, about the giveaway today? Yeah, so basically, this one's an interesting one. So... Uh, what I'd like to know from everybody in the audience, if you want to poke your hand up and say, how many of you guys have a B2B element? You're looking for wholesalers. You're looking for, you know, some of you guys have B2B elements where you're, you're actually going out there finding distributors and stuff like that. My main business is in the arena of, um, I'd say LinkedIn. So what, what my prize is, is, is a booked calendar challenge. And I don't, I wish I had something. In fact, what I might do is I might also give away a training that I did on YouTube to my audience. So yeah, so I'll throw that in as well. So I've got right. two things. Um, I did a training about how I drove all that millions of traffic, millions of impressions to uh, traffic and conversion. So I did a training on that. It's really excellent. Um, and you, you'll get that training along with uh, a training I called the booked calendar challenge. And the book calendar challenge is how do you book appointments with decision makers um, so for those of you looking for bigger deals, more distribution, more channel partners, then that would be a really, really, really important um, video for you. And it teaches you how to get appointments right away. So it's a really great, great training. So back over to you, Norm. All right. Very good. So we will be doing that. All you need to do is hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, tag two people, and you will get a second entry. Now, before we get going, uh, Kelsey, can uh, we have another sponsor? A big thank you to our sponsor, Startup Club, the largest club on Clubhouse with over 790,000 members and growing. They're one of the world's largest communities supporting the startup ecosystem from founders to those wishing to work for a startup and everything in between. You can find them at www.startup.club for blogs, recordings, and a calendar of upcoming shows and on the Clubhouse app. Just search Startup Club for daily shows 24-7. You can also now listen to their show, the Serial Entrepreneur Club podcast, on Apple and Spotify too. Stop by to connect, learn, and grow together. Okay, we're back, and it looks like Corey's... Uh... Oh, he is back. Oh, he's in a different room. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in an Airbnb, so uh, I was just finding something a little bit more comfortable. But um, yeah, I, did, I mean, this I'm probably Airbnb's one one of their biggest customers because uh, my wife and I we a couple years uh, five years ago we decided, hey, we want to go travel the world and do it from the road, run businesses from the road. She's a graphic designer, and obviously, I run Mojo Global, and. And so we tried it for two months just to see if we could make it happen. And, you know, just to make sure, honestly, to make sure we wouldn't kill each other while we're out on the road. So uh, and then we thought, OK, this works. We can do this. So let's do this longer. So we decided to do 12 months, 12 different cities. Uh, and we, we came uh, back to Arizona, Scottsdale, Arizona. That's why I'm from originally. We packed up our house, put everything in storage, and we went on the road. And we've been doing that for this coming up uh, November. Uh, December, it'll be it'll be five years. So uh, that's crazy. Like, I know, right? Where were you last month when I talked to you? You were some tropical. Uh, wow, tropical. that's a good question. So recently, we've been in Prague. We've been in Budapest. Um, I think going back before that, we were in San Miguel de Allende in 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 Mexico. Um, we were also in Lake Balaton uh, in Hungary. Uh, we were also in Austria and Vienna. So you know. <laughs> Been a what, lot of what a lifestyle. Do you, do you know, I, I know we're going down a different rabbit hole here, but you know, um, digital nomads, that's a whole other episode. But do you know um, Sumner Hobart? 
Sumner. That sounds very, very. Familiar. You got to meet Sumner. I think you two would hit it off. Uh, Sumner and his wife, Allie, they're digital nomads. They're every time they call in, they're somewhere else. But uh, I just got this feel that you and and him, uh, I don't know your wife, but uh, yeah. they're just great people. And uh, you guys would probably hit it off. Who knows? You might even end up in the same spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, we love meeting up with people that, you know, because that's one of the things is, you know, at first it was just us traveling, but now, you know, we'll, we'll have, people will fly out to actually meet up, meet, meet up with us. So like, for instance, we went to jazz fest this, this past year, which is one of the most amazing, it's in New Orleans and yeah. it's one of the most amazing music festivals uh, ever. And we had friends that like flew out to meet us there. Uh, the fringe fest, we had, we met up with some friends here as well uh, for that. So it's just really cool when you can meet people and, and at the beginning, it was it was just me and my wife. But now, like we're getting, you know, people are coming to meet us at these different things, and uh, because we're really, you know, we we want we want to travel with friends. How cool yeah. is that? And so that's that's something that we've really put into motion in the last couple of years. So you got an cool. entourage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so going back to Google and YouTube, just so we can get a grasp on the types of different ads, like right now, uh, Amazon PPC. If you don't know. There's about 30 variations and certain ones work, certain ones don't work, depends on your product. Um, what about with Google and YouTube? What kind of ads are working right now? Yeah, so basically there's, um, they have different styles, right? Yep. So they have ones that are like maximized conversions. Um, those are really great. Uh, I love maximized conversions. Uh, you used to be able to run just video ads and in-stream video ads, which I think are really great. Uh, but now they have what's what are called like smart campaigns and smart campaigns are, you know, it's it's like what they're doing is they're mashing everything together. So that way they can get you the most traffic. So, you know, when you do these ones, you're submitting videos, you're submitting images, you're submitting description copy and headline copy. And they're kind of what they're doing is they're using their algorithm to, to basically broadcast this out in many different formats, as many formats as possible on mobile, on desktop. And that way they can take advantage of all the sheer amount of traffic. So it's getting you more exposure on a lot of different websites. So I would say, you know, kind of going in the direction of running their smart campaigns, it does mean a little bit more setup. It means setting up more things like having banners, having more copy, you know, having a video ready to go. Um, but if you, if you have all those elements and you put it together, then it gives you a lot more traffic and a lot more bang for your buck. So that's, that's probably what I would recommend just for getting rolling. If you want to do something more simple, there's definitely some more simple ways to go about it. But, but YouTube, Google is kind of going in the direction where um, they, want, they, they want you to just give them the stuff yep. and then they say, let us take it over. And even if you don't have the stuff, they're trying to generate it automatically based on copy on your website, you know, based on other, other social signals that are out there, uh, other product information, maybe some of your listings. So um, that's what they're trying to do. They, in the future, they just want you to give them your website and they will actually kind of draw, they will deliver you traffic based on all of the information that's on there, right? Which is kind of a cool concept if you think about, I don't know how far away we are, but they're trying to go in that direction. So that way, all they really require is you to put a couple pieces of details in there and of course, the credit card and let them do the rest. Um, and that's a pretty cool scenario. And yeah, Mike, you know, and what they're going to do is, is try and deliver costs, you know, deliver ads based on the, uh, you know, uh, uh, that way you can make money. So I think that's really a, a cool thing. That's off in, the, in, in that direction. But smart campaigns is probably what you want to start, uh, start on, first of all. Good idea. All right. So when you're talking about impressions and grabbing a million impressions, what are some of the best practices? How can we even start to get to those million impressions? Yeah. Um, so I think it, it, I think it really comes down to obviously copy, right? So you want to yep. nail your copy. You want to know your offer. You want to know what, what separates you from everybody else. And then also the biggest thing is like, who, who's your target market? So, you know, because there's so many websites, I think you can, you can target on, this is one of the things I love about it is that once you get to a certain, like, first of all, you can target your competitors, which I think is awesome. So if you know who your competitors are, like you could target all the traffic that's going to those, those, those companies. So you can do that pretty, and you can find people, like it depends what your product is. If you're, you know, go to the chat, what's, what, what kind of product do you have? What is the sector? Is it health and fitness, right? 
Is it, um, is it mechanical? What kind of products are you out there offering? Because there is, there is audiences for almost all, for, for all of those things. And there's tons of them, right? So I think with, um, uh, with doing some keyword research, getting to know your target audience, I think that's, that is one of the primary things that you're going to have to do when you get into the Google platform is tell them who do you want to advertise to. So I would definitely spend some time there. So I've got a sheet that I use um, where I'm, I go through and say, okay, what podcasts are my audience following? What books are they reading? What websites are they going to? Who are my competitors? What might they be looking on Google? And that's kind of where I start when I, before I, I start um, rolling my ads. So once I have this kind of spreadsheet figured out, then, then it makes it a lot easier to kind of plug things in and find the audiences on, 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 on Google. Do you ever use SparkToro? Spark Toro. Tell me more about Spark Toro. Spark Toro, Rand Fish can put it out. And okay. it's just about um, building audiences. So you can go in to your competitors. And within a second, you can go out and find the audience. You can find the, who's influencing their uh, platform. You can go and follow the influencers and find their followers. And basically, it allows you just to build out a persona. Nice. Okay, great. Yeah, I'll check that out. That sounds awesome. Love it. Okay. So uh, I guess, and that that's no different than an Amazon listing or anything. If you don't know your audience, you can't start to even do anything because, you know, if you're just doing a, a shotgun and you're wasting your money, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things you can test out, but I think at the end of the day with a little bit of prep time, like you could really be humming pretty quickly. You can make a lot of money on Google. You can get in front of a lot of your perfect customers if you just spend some time figuring out who they are. Right. Especially if you use the smart ads, I would assume. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, and you know, like I said, there's lots of different ones because some of the people that are really good at Google ads, they'd be like, ah, you know, there's, there's so much better ways to run ads. Um, and that is true, right? Like you can, you know, there's TCPA, which is, you know, uh, target cost per acquisition. There's maximized conversions. There's maximized views. There's max, you know, so you can kind of choose what you want and you just, you can tell Google like, you know, Hey, I want to get most amount of impressions. I want to get the most amount of views. I want to get the most amount of conversions and let you handle more of the rest. I want, I want you to get me a buyer, um, for around X amount of dollars. Right. And uh, don't don't go through that. Don't go over that threshold. And so the, their AI is going to try and figure that out. So there's a lot of more complex things you can do. But I think at the end of the day, if you're just getting started, try not to make it too complex for yourself. And honestly, if you do light spend, like you don't have to do a crazy amount just to get rolling. Right. Do some light spend and let and really train the Google AI pixel to learn how to drive you traffic. And that's one of the biggest things, because if you train it well, then you're going to do super well. And, and that's part of the thing, too, is that you can set up conversions um, on your website just like you can with any other platform and really train Google on who your best performing uh, customers are. And they're going to send you more of that, which I think yeah. is really fantastic. But it just takes time. It takes time right. for, them, for you to do that. So when you're talking about time, and I know this is kind of like how long is a piece of string, but, uh, you know, what, what kind of time are you talking about? Well, so I'll just kind of describe what, what happened for me. So sure. it, was, um, it was COVID, right? I remember I got stuck in New Zealand, uh, which is, you know, there are far worse places to get stuck, you know. <laughs> like we, me and my wife, we flew in from Italy, from Rome, um, and COVID was, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was just about to pop off. Um, and it was popping off, I think, in Italy. So we flew into New Zealand because that's just where we happened to be going. And then a, f a few days later, they shut the entire country, the border, essentially. Mm. Um, and I remember that because my friends were actually flying into town the next day, uh, but they shut the border. So they couldn't fly in even. Um, mm. so, so anyway, we're, we're in Auckland and then we flew to Queenstown for a bit. And I'm learning. I, I bought my first I got a, a friend had a course on YouTube and he's like, Hey, you know, here's a course on this. Cause I was kind of interested in it. So I checked it out and then I started buying some other courses and really just, you know, got going with that. And, um, and so I spent quite a bit on courses, I would say, uh, go, you know, but I gotta say the first funnel that I did made money, like pretty much week one. 
week one, it made money. It was positive cash flow, which is pretty tremendous. And that's, I think it could be rare maybe. Um, but I think if you really invest into course materials or even consultants or, you know, and that's always, when I try and learn something, the first thing I do is buy a book on it. I get a course and I buy more advanced courses and I get consulting on it. Right. Until I, I, you know, I know I'm, I'm operating at the highest level possible. And I try and do that as quickly as, as possible. So for me, you know, it took me probably, I would say about 30 days to get my funnel okay. done and in order. Um, but once I started the ads, it was, it was profitable almost immediately. Um, so, so that's pretty cool. So I would say allow yourself, you know, 30, 60 days yeah. to, to really get things flying, you know? And that's not long. You know, 30 to 60 days is, is nothing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I got one last question before we dig into some of these other questions that are coming through. And it's about mistakes. What are some of the common mistakes that you're seeing people do? Uh, yeah. So, so there's quite a few, right? So, um, the first thing that that's really important is you got to stay away from certain things, right? Like Google doesn't like, you know, there, there's certain things like, um, people that were doing ads that had the word COVID in it during, during COVID, like they got them, you know, at, at first it was okay. And then all of a sudden they just kind of, you know, uh, yeah. turn those off. The thing about it is too, like, you really want to work on, you want to have a great product because the way Google looks at it is like they kind of get into business with you. And so if they're your partners, right, they want to make sure that you have a great product and you're delivering the great service. They go through your funnel. They probably buy your stuff, right? So they're, they're looking at because they're really looking long term and they want to do business with the best companies that are out there. And so if you have, they have a really great experience with your company, they're actually going to give you higher marks for that. Overall, if you've got a great company and a great product and you really deliver on your promises, then uh, you're going to get cheaper ad costs, right? It's going to be cheaper for you to advertise, which is really important because there's some kind of ranking system that goes on. I'm not quite sure what it is, but I do know that at the end of the day, they're, 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 they're trying to see how, how well you're running your business. So you really want to make sure that your business is buttoned up, that you've got great customer service, great product fulfillment. Um, that you're delivering on your guarantees, right? That sort of thing. So if you have like a refund guarantee or anything like that, that you've got that stuff nailed down because they're most likely going to get in there and see how your business is operating on some level. Um, so that's really important. And I think it's so important that, that you deliver on that, that you really focus on your business. Like if, you're, if you don't have that nailed down, then you probably shouldn't be driving massive amounts of traffic anyway, right? You just get everything kind of buttoned up as far as the quality of your product and the delivery and the fulfillment of it and the customer support before you start doing, uh, doing really uh, good ads, right? Um, so the mistake is, is not having that dialed in before you start because if you don't, then overall, it's going to cost you, it's going to become so expensive that you're not going to be able to do it. So I think there's a, so there's a lot to be said, right? Some people that say it's, that's more expensive could be just that, you know, you, you just got marked up as far as the ad cost, because maybe there, there wasn't as much delivery in the back end for your product. So that's a mistake. The other thing is, is not managing your ads. Um, so you want to do it on a daily basis, right? It doesn't take long once you get mm -hmm. the hang of it. And the third thing is, is not keeping investing in your education, right? Keep investing in your education. Keep, you know, like what I do is if I'm making money, I'm going to take some of that money and reinvest it back into my knowledge base, get higher level consultants, get more people that have scaled up traffic even more, um, pay, pay people so I can learn this stuff and apply it. So that way I can run ads even better because then it lowers down my ad costs, right? That's what you want. You want the lowest amount of ad costs. And the way you do that is you keep investing in your knowledge. Very good. All right. So those are some nuggets. Uh, that's really great information, uh, Corey. Okay, Kelsey, there seems to be a ton of questions here. We are getting a ton. Yep. So uh, before we get to these, Corey, do you have a cutoff time? Is there, do we have to? Uh... Uh, yeah, actually on the hour. Yes, I've got to run. On the hour. Yep. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Okay. So we'll, we'll go through these and then I think we can do the Wheel of Kelsey uh, without Corey, just so we can save some oh, he, time. He's got to see the Wheel of Kelsey. Okay, sure. All right, we can do that. So we'll go through these quick. Uh, let me see. Uh, from Yanni, uh, what's your opinion about YouTube's new video ad templates? Is it useful or should we create our video ads elsewhere? 
Yeah, that's a good question. I, I'm always a big proponent of like, you know, having the best video ad that you can possibly have, you know. So Yanni, that's that's a great question. I would say that you don't want to look like everybody else. Mm. Um, and I for sure wouldn't trust uh, their, I for sure wouldn't trust their templates. I mean, obviously they put it together to make it easier for folks, but I would say, you know, you want to be unique in the marketplace. So I would say that you should probably create your own video uh, ads. But, you know, if it comes down to it, if it's the easiest thing for you to do and get rolling and at least it allows you to dip your toe in the water, then do it. Right. But I would say ultimately go for being unique instead and make sure you've got something that you're really pumped about. Because, you know, if you got a really great video creative, that you're excited to put out there, it's it's just going to be so much different as far as the energy you put into driving your business traffic. So right. that's that's my thoughts. All right. Next one is from Nathan. Uh, what do you think of Google shopping ads with pictures? Can you, you can you run these directly to your Amazon listing? Yeah, I mean Google is so great that they have all kinds of different ads. I would say I would say that you really want to develop your own websites because think about this, right? Um, if you're driving it to Amazon, like, yes, you're going to get the traffic and, but it's, you want to capture the, the, the target because what you can do is retarget them. So if you're going to do anything like get them to your website first, then drive them to your Amazon listing. Don't, don't just drive them to your Amazon listing because then you can't really retarget them. And once you develop a certain amount of traffic, like you, you know, the retargeting is much, much cheaper. So I would say run them to your own website. I know it, it might not be the easiest thing, but if you, even if you put together a simple website that even drives them to the Amazon afterward, it's going to be a lot better for you in the long run. Right. And one of the ways that we do it is we'll provide some form of add-on, like added value product. So you get them over there, pop-up comes on, get that information, and then that you can give them a coupon or whatever, drive them back over to Amazon You get the best of both worlds. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you know the deal. Like Amazon, you know, they're they're obviously helping you sell product, but they're not your best buds, right? Like they're not going to be your ride or die uh, for, for, for long till eternity. I mean, you know, if they've got something better that they can drive traffic to or whatever, whatever, then they're going to go with that. Um, and so all kinds of things can happen. So you really want to control your traffic and control your buying situation as much as possible. Okay, awesome. This one is a uh, different route, uh, but from Tony, digital nomad question. Are you able to actually work a lot less? If you're just working on a computer on the beach, there's no point in traveling so much. What are your thoughts? So this is kind of interesting because um, let's talk about why people go on vacation. A lot of times people go on vacation because they're burnt out, right? It's like you throw your hands in the air. I just, I need a vacation, right? You're just trying to get away from uh, kind of like the, the pressures that, that happen in your own life. The thing about traveling full time, traveling, I think for me is that every, every week I'm in a new place, I'm experiencing new things. Um, so, you know, I'll take Fridays off if I want to, or, you know, I've got that flexibility, but I feel that if you are constantly rejuvenating yourself and doing something that feels out of the normal and feels more like a vacation, then you can you can fire yourself up. And that's really why people go on vacation. I mean, travel, not everybody's into travel, right? You don't have to be into travel. I just happen to love it because I love cultures and I love experiencing new things. But it also kind of when I experience new things, it it makes like the, the rest of the week, like I, I hustle hard um, during the week because I'm running, you know, a very successful company. I'm also starting a company called Stories on the Blockchain. So I'm starting something in blockchain. I'm also in a, long, a year long team management and leadership program. Um, through Landmark, which is really great. And then also, you know, I, I, I love to have fun and, and, and have, you know, with my wife, we go out and do plenty of different things. So we're, so traveling in itself is its own part-time thing for us, right? So it's just definitely one of those priorities that we have. So for, for me, I find that I, you know, it's not that I work any less. I just figure out how to kind of schedule myself. So that way travel really becomes part of my life. It's like, part of what I do every single day and every single week and every single month. And it makes it a lot more fun because I don't, you know, I, I tend not to waste any time. Like if, if I'm not just going to sit around and watch Netflix, if there's a, if there's a whole world like castles out there in Scot Scotland that I haven't seen, I want to go see those. Right. And, but I also like to relax as well. So you just figure out how to kind of 
uh, put your schedule together so that it works for you. And at the end of the day, what really matters is are you charging yourself up? And if you can do that with travel, then then make it happen. Like figure out how right. you can do that. Very good. Okay, awesome. Or you can watch uh, uh, Castles of Scotland on Netflix. That that's cool. I haven't seen that yet. Maybe <laughs> but but I like I like room. what you're saying. <laughs> All okay, right. so one, we one have last about, question, but just before yep. we go to that question, uh, remember, hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, tag two people, and you will get a second entry, and then there is two really awesome, it's one giveaway with two really awesome training courses from uh, Corey today. All right, so I'll answer this last question from Manny. Uh, if I want to learn how I can run Google Ads or maybe YouTube Ads uh, by myself, which sources would you recommend? Thank you. Uh, so there's a couple, you know, there's there's quite a few courses out there, right? So um, like the ones that I got, I remember um, I started off with YouTube ads and I think John Pembernathy had a really cool course. There's also one like called Ad Outreach. Uh, Alex Becker, uh, you know, has one as well. That one is really good for funnels. Uh, I find um, the Ad Outreach one, which is far more expensive, that one's really good for kind of figuring out how to um, do the ads, right? And kind of dialing those in. And then I bought another one, um, which is like links, um, a couple of gentlemen um, that, and that was really about scale. So each, each one, so Alex Becker was really about, um, you know, getting the funnel. And then, and then uh, along the way, I also just hired consultants, like people that, like there's a guy who runs a Google ads podcast and I just hired him to actually like train me up on how to run ads. Yep. And that was really great as well. So once I got to the point where I needed like individual help for my individual questions, because I had kind of outgrown the courses, then it makes sense to do that. And so I just reached out to him and said, hey, can you mentor me? So uh, so yeah, so different, different flavors uh, based on where you're at. Okay, right. very good. Awesome. Okay, so I think it's time for the wheel. Um, yeah, we can jump right into it. Uh, and Corey, if there's any time where you need to get going, just let us know and you can just hop out of here. But uh, yeah, we'll jump into the wheel and here we go. It's time for the Wheel of Health. All right, so we have our Wheel of Kelsey here. Uh, we do this every single podcast, so make sure you tune in next time on Wednesday if you are not the winner today. But uh, here we go. We'll give it a shuffle. If you are the winner, please email me, k at lunchwithnorm.com, and let's see who today's winner is. Yanni. Yanni. Congrats, All right. Yanni. That's a All great right, so Yanni, <laughs> let me know, k at lunchwithnorm.com, and I'll contact you, and I'll connect you with Corey and uh, get that figured out for you. Okay, so that's it for today. Corey, thank you for coming on. It's been awesome talking to you. I'm glad I could get you for an hour. <laughs> yeah, no problem, absolutely. Here's another thing I'll throw out there. Um, I'm starting a group called Stories on the Blockchain. Uh, if you, uh, here, here's what I'm doing. I live in the, we're living in the promise that stories last forever. So we're taking stories and publishing them as NFTs, which is really cool. Um, so what we're doing is we're looking for people that um, love stories and love legacy and people that want to find out what it is and, and perhaps be part of the team. Hit me up on LinkedIn, uh, linkedin.com slash in slash Corey Sanchez. You can just type in Corey Sanchez into there and uh, yeah, find me there. But that's that's something that I'm doing that's really cool. Um, a brand new technology. We're building an app that actually also helps you publish NFTs and your stories uh, as well. So it's really, really awesome. But yeah, looking for great people that uh, are interested in that kind of stuff and, and want to get their, you know, get their, their fingers in the, you know, want to stomp some grapes, right? Get their fingers in the mud and actually do something and build something. Oh, I can't wait. I'm very interested in getting involved with that. Uh, Corey, I don't know if you have two seconds to stick around, but I'll let you go right now. We're going to just uh, talk to the audience for two seconds. And then if you can stick around, great. If you can't, I'll talk to you another time. Yeah, sounds but, good, guys. Thanks so much. It was great being on. All right. Okay. So thank you, everybody, for being on the podcast today. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. This is something that uh, I think would be very valuable for you. So uh, anyways, Kelsey, why don't you come on for a sec?
All right. What are we supposed to do? All right. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode uh, talking about Google and YouTube ads. And uh, yeah, let us know if there are any topics you want to listen to. Uh, Maybe it's a different ad platform like Pinterest or uh, Twitter. Let us know in the comment sections, or you can always email me, k at lunchwithnorin.com. Again, congrats, Yanni, on winning today's uh, session. Hope you enjoy it. Just make sure you email me um, so we both remember to uh, reach out. And uh, yeah, thank you, Rich, Manny, Yanni. We had Tony joining us, Manny, Howard. It's uh, great to see everyone. It's great to be back. And uh, we've got some great shows lined up for you. Um, Also, Chuck Bronwyn, good to see everyone, Nathan, and uh, really do appreciate you stopping by and spending a minute with us. Uh, Thank you so much. And uh, let me see. Don't forget to join our Facebook group, Lunch with Norm, Amazon FBA and e-commerce collective. Also, if you're watching from YouTube, make sure you subscribe on the YouTube channel. We do this uh, three times a week, so make sure you stop on by next time. And uh, I think that's it. Okay, so thank you. You can join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for being part of the community. We could not do this without you. And we look forward, Kelsey's back. We look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. All right, guys. Lunch with the, lunch with the, lunch with the.